Now for this item, I think this is the... I think this is the longest um, expression from A to O. Okay. So, um, ano ba yung gagawin natin dito? Napakahaba yun ang expression natin. No? So, you might be saying na, ang ah, hirap naman itong i-integrate agad. No? Kasi pag nakita mo parang nakaka-intimidate. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa integral na, integral na um, sometimes uh, na-fulfill ka ng mga expression natin. Kasi sometimes they look so difficult because it's kind of very long. Pero um, sometimes it's easy and sometimes meron naman tayo na mukhang madali pero ang hirap pala no. So ano ba yung gagawin natin dito sa certain case ito? So ang gagawin natin dito is um, whenever you see um, a certain expression na pwede natin ma-apply ang property ng trigonometry, we'll do that. Okay? And in this case, um, I'll be using yung property natin ng cosine of 2x. Na nabanggit ko na siya kanina na equal siya sa cosine of squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. So, let's try substitute substituting that to our expression. So, we have the inverse tangent of the square root of... Now, for this one, we have 1 minus and incorporating this so we can get cosine squared x minus minus sine squared x Okay. And then for the denominator, what we have is 1 plus cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then the, uh, ano muna pala? Um, okay, so how time will be x. Okay. Now, um, ano ba yung magagawa natin dito? So remember, if we have this cosine squared inverse tangent of this one, di ba uh, this numerator uh, we can simplify this in terms of 1 minus cosine squared x and then 1 pl and then plus sine squared x. And we know quite well that if this is 1 minus cosine squared x, we can have um, sine squared x here. And then this one is sine squared x as well. So therefore, this becomes 2 sine squared x. Okay, so... Yun, ganun siya. Um, hopefully, nasundan nyo siya Diba, 1 minus cosine squared x based on, diba, alam naman natin na this is one of the basic or fundamental properties of our Pythag uh, so Pythagorean theorem. Na cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So in this case, if I have 1 minus cosine squared x, that is sine squared x. And since we have sine squared x plus sine squared x, kasi may negative dito, madidistribute yan into positive sine squared x. And therefore, we have 2 sine squared x. Now, how about for the denominator? So, we have 1 plus cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So, in this case, we have 1 minus sine squared x, which gives us cosine squared x, diba? So, this is 2 cosine squared x, okay? And this simplifies our expression na simpleng simple lang, diba? We can now cancel 2 here, and then sine squared over cosine squared, diba? Alam natin na this is tangent squared x. So therefore, this will be the integral of cosine squared of the inverse tangent of the um, square root of tangent squared x dx. Okay? And um, remember, if this is tangent squared x, square root of tangent squared x, diba? This one would be simply tangent. Kasi, square root is square root. So this becomes the integral of cosine squared, the inverse tangent of the tangent of x. Okay, so does it make perfect sense now? Kasi, di ba, tangent to. Kasi, natanggal natin yung square root ng radical sign. Kasi nga, yung radical sign mismo, kasi nga, naka-square siya. So, um, how do we evaluate this tangent inverse of tangent of x? Um, remember, if you have this tangent x, and then you're trying to take the inverse of that, then therefore, the answer should be this x alone. So, therefore, this would be cosine squared of x dx as your final expression. So, but naging ganon? Um, remember, for example, if you have, let's say, inverse, I mean, you have, let's say, first of all, tangent of pi over 4. So, alam naman natin na yung tangent pi over 4, diba, this is equal to 1. Okay, alam naman natin yan. And then, if you try to take the inverse tangent of 1, so, just do it, no? 
alam na natin this is equal to pi over 4. Siyempre, yung first value natin ng argument. So, in this case, uh, this is equal to this x. Diba? That's why it makes perfect sense na kung halimbawa meron kang certain uh, ano, meron kang certain expression na what na ginagawa mo is tinitake mo yung inverse nung mismong ano na yun, yung mismong function na yun, then you just have to take the inside function. That's the same thing that works for inverse cosine of the cosine of x will be left out with x only as well as for example the inverse sine of let's say sine 45 degrees so in this case this is equal to 45 degrees and that's also the same way when you take the sine of the inverse sine of 45 that would still be the same result of course this one is ano dapat naka in terms of ano to um radians no but anyway, uh, what I'm telling you is that um, whatever is your, um, whatever the function you're trying to evaluate, kapag um, yung composition ng function natin is the inverse and then yung mismo function nun, um, you'll be left out with just the inside function itself. So, wala na tayong question about that. Okay, para lang yan ding ano, yung in-square mo yung radical sign, di ba? Natitira na lang sa'yo is yung, ano, yung original function sa loob. Oops. So, yan. So, I hope na ano, natatandaan niyo yung ganong property. Anyway, so, natira na sa atin is cosine squared x dx. And we know na this one is actually 1 half cosine. I mean, no, sorry. Diba, by based on property, this is equal to the integral of 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x dx. So, we can now integrate this and the antiderivative of this expression should be 1 half x plus 1 half sine of 2x times 1 half which becomes 1 fourth for this case. So, this is your final answer for this um, problem. So, I hope um, the question siya ng maigi. Huwag uh, kayo ma-intimidate sa mga looks ng inyong um, integrate as long as there is something that you can do with the properties but of course um, if if this one became something like 3 eh, ibang usapan na yan medyo hindi na natin yan basta agad masosolve no? baka nga wala pa yung sagot eh, if ever so um, in that case um, you have to look closely on the properties we can apply Kasi yun lang talaga yung method para masolve natin itong mga gantong items kasi if you're not knowledgeable about it then um nastaka na lang sa ano sa titingnan mo na lang diba Okay so now let's move on to the next which is your better Now ito naman lumabas na yung cube root of x Now for cases like this ang pinaka ine-employ natin na method is to um, use the least um, expression wherein hanap tayo nung uh, parang LCM niya. Okay. So, ano ba yung sinasabi ko? Diba this one is raised to one third. This one is raised to one half. So, ano ba yung ano, yung pwede nating LCM nung dalawang yun? Diba one six. So, we let u is equal to x raised to 1 over 6. So, ganyan gagawin natin. So, um, remember, this one is 1 third, this one is 1 half. So, 1 6 yan. Pag minultiply natin, ba 1 6. Not necessary multiply, but you just uh, have to find the LCD. Usually, diba, this is done by multiplying. But anyway, so, uh, yun na yun yung LCM natin. And then, um, with this, uh, we can say na from this expression, we know that um, u squared is x uh, squared which becomes x raised to one third which is also equal to cube root of x correct and then of course yung ating u cube this would be equal to x um, raised to one half kasi uh, na cube na natin siya eh, diba? so that is three over six that becomes one half and then how about du so du is equal to one over six x raised to one six minus one will give me negative five over six and then dx so, how do we deal with this? Kasi yung ating d is supposedly dx lang to eh. So, uh, we'll be using naman yung ating mga ginamit dito. So, di ba, um, 
just copy 1, 6. And then yung ating um, x raised to negative 5 over 6. So, if you try to raise this to negative 5, so what happens? Uh, ganun lang. Uh, this becomes u raised to negative 5 and then dx. Okay? So, hopefully it makes sense now. Kasi, um, you just have to raise this to the certain exponent that you need. And then, di ba, pag exponential naman siya, um, kapag nire-raise mo yung certain variable doon, namumultiply lang siya doon sa exponent pag siya ay raise, no? Pero syempre, pag multiply yun, iba yung na-add yung exponent natin. So anyway, so therefore, dx from this expression is still equal to 6 du and then um, times u to the 5th. Now, this could have been over u to the negative 5, but uh, you can just simply use naman yung ating u to the 5th if you want to um, express this in terms of, ano, of simpler expression. And then, um, Siguro yung sulit ko na lang siya in terms of this, no? 6 u to the 5th du. Para mas maganda siyang form. Okay. So, baka magtaka kayo. Um, diba, ulitin natin, this can be written dun sa denominator. That's why ito yung matitira. Okay. So, with this, the expression in terms of u would be the integral of... Um, so, dx is 6 u to the 5th du. And then we divide this by square root of x, which is actually equal to u cubed, and then plus a cube root of x, uh, cube root of x, which is actually equal to u squared. Okay. And does this looks uh, does this look familiar na sa inyo yung ating gantong form? So yung gantong form, alam naman natin na ra ano na siya, rational expression with polynomial polynomial uh, functions na pwede nating i-apply ating long division because um, actually kahit din na long division pala kasi we can say clearly na we can factor out u squared from this expression so we have here um, the integral of u squared times 6 u to the u cubed du and then we factor out u squared from this so we have u cubed I mean u that should be u plus 1 okay so, we can cancel out u squared here. So, sana na sundan nyo yung uh, nangyari dito, no? Okay. And then, uh, finally, what we were left at is the 6u cubed du over u plus 1, which we can perform long division. Okay. So, we have uh, u plus 1 and then divided by 6u cubed. So, in this case, uh, kung mapansin nyo, medyo na-apply natin lahat ng ano, mga properties natin, no? Meron tayong u substitution. Meron tayong redefining and then uh, finally we have long division. So we have a u squared and then I mean 6 u squared and then 6 u cubed and then of course plus uh, 6 u squared. Now, um, nilipat ko pala to kasi medyo mahaba tong solution dito. No? Kasi remember, um, nasa cube tayo and then to u plus 1 lang. So we have 6 u cubed and then divided by u plus 1. So we have 6u squared. 6u squared plus um, uh, 6u cubed plus 6u squared subtract. So we have negative 6u squared. And then minus 6u. So this becomes negative 6u squared minus 6u subtract. So we add this. This becomes 0. And then positive 6u. So this becomes plus 6 and then 6u, and I think plus 6 subtract, so we have negative 6. So finally, our integral expression would be the integral of 6u squared minus 6u plus 6, and then minus 6 over u plus 1, and then the u. Okay, so this is your final expression. And then uh, we can now integrate. Now, uh, let's just have a look on our final integrand. So, ito is power rule as well as this one. This one's constant. Now, for this one, alam naman natin, itong gantong form is the natural logarithm, di ba? Kasi u plus 1 lang itong ilalim natin. So, with this, um, our integral would be, um, ibahin natin yung ulay. So, that would be 6 u cubed over 3, okay? Minus 6 u squared over 2 plus 6u and then minus 6 the natural logarithm of u plus 1. Okay. So, hindi to inverse trigo kasi wala naman tayong square dito. Had it been this uh, square, so um, inverse trigo na yung gagamitin natin. And then plus c. But of course, we need to um, simplify this and substitute it with u. I mean, with x. So, we have, I think this is 2. And then yung ating u cube 
dito is square root of x. So, 2 square root of x and then minus 3. U squared dito is cube root of x. So, ito yung atin. And then, plus 6u. Yung u natin dito is x raised to 1, 6. So, x, I mean 6, x raised to 1 over 6. Then, minus 6, the natural logarithm of u, which is x raised to 1 over 6. And then, plus 1, plus c. Okay, so this is your final answer for this um, problem. Okay, so ganun na lang natin i-approach yung ating mga problem whenever we encounter this um, radicals na hindi siya uh, square root lang. Kasi sometimes magkakasama sila. May square root, may fifth root, fourth root. So what you have to do is to find the LCD of that um, certain radical expression and then... Um, just do some redefining of the equation and then you'll be able to get that easy result. And uh, dito sa nangyari sa atin, you substitution muna tayo and then redefining, then uh, long division and then this application of the extension of natural logarithm sa uh, latter term natin. But the rest naman is napakadali naman siyang integrate. But remember, just remember your, ano lang, your properties and um, that will be easy. And I think we're down with the last Finally, last item for this um, basic, basic basic integration and other important techniques. So, uh, basic lang itong procedures na ito, no? kasi konti lang kasi ginagawa natin. And later on dun sa ating uh, midterm, which um, of course, magkukwiz muna tayo. Dun tayo medyo magkakaroon ng rigorous integration. Kaya, um, Masanay na kayo na um, for this one is um, buti nga medyo mahaba-haba na rin mas sinasolve natin ito para at least medyo prepared tayo sa midterm. Okay. So, we delete this and then we move forward na sa ating last item. Tsaka kung mapapansin nyo, diba, yung array ng mga ginagawa natin sa integral uh, medyo talagang iba siya compared sa difficult kasi sa difficult naging as in rules lang talaga. Pag sa alam yung rules, uh, almost all problems pwede mo nang masolve. Pero dito kasi parang you have to think first before you do something. Kasi pag mali yung nagawa mo, sayang yung effort mo, minsan nagagawa ka ng mga um, possible solutions na hindi naman tama or malapit sa tama. That's why you have to familiarize, familiarize yourself with a lot of integrants na pwede natin. And uh, hopefully, I can ano, I can do something about it. Kasi I'm thinking of doing yung mapping. For example, um, nakita mo is rational. Para kasi nag-isip ako na gawa ng ganito. Halimbawa, ito rational expression. So, ito is halimbawa, let's say this one is trigo function. So, ano ba yung sunod na approach? Is this, uh, is the degree greater than m? Or is the n equal to m? So, with this, uh, first is long division. So, um, I'm thinking of doing something like that. Uh, pero, syempre, um, pag natapos ka na yung mga gawain ko talaga. And I think na that is only applicable pag pure function lang sila. Pero, if it is not, then um, nahihirap siyang gawin eh. Kasi, hindi talaga siya posible if the function is, you know, hindi applicable yung ating mga ganong scenario. Okay. Now, uh, this one is uh, actually a very easy one. Kasi, Dun sa isang portion dito, nagawa ko na tong parang uh, same idea nito eh, di ba? Kung matatandaan nyo yung ating, ano, ating previous examples. But anyway, um, what I want to um, discuss here is your factoring. Especially yung ta pagtanggal natin ng mga constant. So dito, pag um, once na meron kayo nakitang gantong form, di ba may ano yun, 9x squared minus 7. Usually kasi yung nakita natin before ng mga example is that um, lahat ng ating denominator is just x squared. Uh, meron minsan ditong x pero you just have to complete the square and wala kang problema. Pero what if meron tayong constant na nakamultiply sa x squared? What do we have to do with that case? So, ang gagawin muna natin dito is we factor out yung constant na nakamultiply sa ating x squared. So, with this, we have 1 over 9 times x squared minus 7 over 9. So, ganito yung magiging first step mo dyan. So, na-factor out mo na yan, we can just rewrite this in terms of 1 over 9, the integral of dx over x squared minus 7 over 9. And then, you can proceed with the integration now with this. Okay? So, kung matatandaan nyo sa inyong rules, ang pumapasok, na rule for this 
is your um, inverse secant, di ba? Oh, sorry, inverse tangent. Kasi yung um, inverse tangent, um, we can rewrite this in terms of negative 1 over 9, the integral of dx over um, 7 over 9 minus x squared, di ba? And this is um, a fitting integrand for inverse hyperbolic tangent. So with this, uh, we can just copy your negative 1 over 9, kasi uh, scalar multiple, siya, multiple, so 1 over 9 times. Um, remember, dun sa inverse cosine before, um, wala tayong 1 over a multiplier kasi hindi naman niya ina-employ yung ganong math, uh, ganong uh, fitting integrand. But for this case, we have to employ yung ating 1 over a. So this becomes times 1 divided by the square root of 7 over 9. So um, let's just use ito muna para mas clear tayo. Dito, a is equal to the square root of 7 over 9, and then yung ating u is actually equal to x. So, 1 over a, and then the inverse tangent of um, the inverse tangent of x over a, so that is x divided by the square root of 7 over 9, okay? Plus c. So, basically, this is your final answer, but uh, you can just simply, ano natin, pwede natin actually itong i-simplify ano, muna. So, diba, this one is uh, square root of 7 over 3, positive negative 3 yan actually. But um, let's just use the positive side here muna. So, um, the reason is that um, we usually use that kasi pag, ano, pag uh, we try to take the, the square root of any, of any variable dito, especially when we're dealing with inverse hyperbolic, we usually take the positive side of that root lagi. Though, if you want to express this in terms of its expression, in terms of yung, ano, yung mismong, ano, yung natural logarithm niya, um, sometimes we use absolute value or plus minus. But for this case, let's just use a positive na lang. So, we have negative 1 over 9 times 3 over the square root of 7. Okay. And then, the inverse tangent of, so this makes sense na maging ganun na rin yung ating um, denominator here, which is actually uh, something like, 3x over the square root of 7 plus c. And then, uh, let's siguro irrationalize na lang natin. Uh, though, pwede namang hindi, pero irrationalize na natin. So, minus, I think this will be 1 third. And then, this will be square root of 7. And then, 21. Okay. Kasi diba, this becomes a negative 1 third. Then, irrationalize mo ngayon yung 7. So, maging square root of 7 times 7 times 3, which becomes 21. And then, the inverse tangent of your um, 3 square root of 7x over 7. Though, you can always um, have this answer naman sa taas. Basta, gawin mo na lang siyang 3. Okay. So, this is your final answer for the last num last letter O. And then, I think we're done with all the necessary, ano, necessary discussions sa basic integration. And I just want to discuss something about this summary of basic integration before we end this. Okay, and just to have a recap of what we do. Now, for this one, I would just like to discuss things about yung ating um, summary of basic integration techniques. Because, um, actually, ginawa na natin almost lahat dito sa atin. Uh, hindi ko lang to na-discuss. Una sa lahat, um, yung main goal natin, ito, sinabi na dito, no? The main goal is to fit all integrands to the basic rules by rearranging, factoring, or simplifying the integrand first. And kung matatandaan nyo, yung ginawa natin before, nag-long divide tayo, nag-factor, yun yung mga methods na simple, wherein pag nagawa mo yun, after nun, fitting integrand na siya. So, pwede natin integrate So, yun yung um, in-explain yung number one. Then, for number two, if the integrand is a rational function whose highest degree, so, so in short, kapag mas mataas yung degree ng numerator, you have to perform long division first. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng number two, which is, tunan nyo, ginawa na natin siya. Number three, kapag naman yung ating um, expression is like this, in the form of sine A, sine B, sine A, cosine B, cosine A, cosine B. This is the property that you can apply. Okay? Which is nagawa na natin siya before. And then yung product naman, kung gantong form, if it is either, um, if either M or N is a positive odd integer, so you can integrate this using this expression. Actually, ginawa rin natin siya before. Kung matatandaan nyo yung, uh, yung identity na ginamit natin though hindi siya ganito talagang form no kasi um, kaya ako muna hindi siya isinama kasi there are cases wherein um, mag-a-apply tayo na tinatawag natin na 
x substitution which is uh, sa second module pa natin i-discuss. Kaya hindi mo na, me, medyo naging careful ako sa mga pag-include nung ganito. But anyway, dun sa ating mga sine squared u, cosine squared u, uh, di ba? At saka dun sa sine u, cosine u, uh, ito yung ating in-apply na properties ng trigo. Which is, um, I recommend na sa uluhin nyo to kasi this, these are very important especially when dealing with integra, integral calculus when we have trigonometric functions. And then, uh, last uh, three under this number three we have the power of tangent n u or cotangent n u so instead of a uh, tangent co and sine and cosine we have tangent and cotangent so you can use this property for them and of course this one almost ano lang naman yan, same concept lang it's just that kapag uh, cosecant secant cotangent tangent you use the properties as mentioned above okay and then uh, kaya din careful ako hindi masyado ako nagbigay ng ganito kasi there are certain cases wherein we need, we need to apply integration by parts which will be discussed on the next on the future kaya um medyo hindi mo na ako nag-add ng masyadong complicated or maraming ganito no now for f uh, the product on the form tangent m secant n to the u i think uh this was given in pattern recognition so yun yun yung um, cases like this so what you have to look for is that if you have a tangent squared x here you have to look for the secant squared x just to make sure na yung ating derivative of tangent is existing kasi if ever it is not let's say um yung ating um halimbawa yung ating tangent dito is even let's say tangent squared u and then yung secant mo dito is cubed so with that, uh, m being even and then secant being odd, so that means that we need to apply integration by parts, which is not yet discussed. But if ever m is odd, okay, so if m is odd and then yung ating n is also odd, positive integer shop. So you can just use rule uh, f number 2 or you can use um, n. If n is even, then you can use uh, rule number 1 here. Just make sure na, um, just make uh, sure na yung ating tangent is, I mean, yung ating n, which is secant, eh, dapat nag-exist nag siya as um, even, parang ganun. So, yun lang naman yung ating rules na dapat i-follow. Now, how about for number 4? So, for number 4, if an integrand contains fractional exponents, ito yung ginawa natin kanina, no? Kasi, diba, um, hindi natin uh, kayang i-fit yun. Sabi dito, u substitution must be used to eliminate fractional exponents and must proceed to integration under other above-mentioned rules. Ang ibig sabihin nito, um, yung u substitution na gagawin natin is yung hahanapin mo natin yung least common multiple or LCD um, ng ating exponents. In that case, diba, meron tayo before na one-third at saka um, one-half. So, instead of uh, simply u substitution, uh, nag-ano muna tayo, nag-let u equal to x is equal to the x times uh, raised to the certain LCD. So, ganun yung gagawin natin when it comes to fractional exponents and hindi lang yung mga square-square na exponent natin. And then, uh, lastly, ito yung pinakamahalaga dito actually, if any of the integrand does not fit under the above rules, kung siya nag-fit sa ating basic integration procedures, or uh, we need to incorporate more a more complicated step then we should be performing those uh, methods that are discussed in module 2 which in this case is the um, intended for special integration techniques because there are cases wherein uh, the integrand is a little complicated or um, very complicated and we couldn't apply any of the basic integration procedures that we know so we'll be applying either partial fraction decomposition trigonometric substitution complex trigonometric substitution integration by parts um, so yun, and then if it's definite then we'll be using um numerical methods if it's um if it's the only way possible so for the next discussions we'll be discussing things about these Riemann sums and definite integrals and as well as um itong i think we'll be able to finish na to hanggang Ano, hanggang initial conditions and particular solutions kasi um, quick discussion lang naman yung about this parang pre-application lang naman to so I'm hoping na we'll be able to finish this by next week but uh, on the next uh, week next meeting uh, we should have a consultation kasi yun yung pinaramis ko and then yun din yung nilulok forward nyo so um, the consultation will just be focusing on the very first upload up until this uh, other basic integration techniques na na discuss ko so basically magtatakal tayo yung parang four videos yun. 
Um, kung di ako nagkakamali, for uh, three videos na yan na upload ko eh. So, parang pa four na to. If ever. Basta kung ano man yung upload na video prior to your consultation, then that will be our topic. Okay.